Well, we begin here with a new and disturbing report out of the Wall Street Journal this morning. As more questions surround the role of big tech in protecting our children online, I couldn't believe what I read. The journal reports that Instagram has been connecting and promoting a vast network of pedophilia. Researchers within the Wall Street Journal's investigation found that the platform enabled users to search for hashtags and recommended accounts related to buying and selling child sex material. One shocking example was a hashtag involving preteen sex. And despite the platform's algorithm promoting this type of content to other users, it's unclear how this network slipped under the nose of Instagram's parent company, Meta, and its CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. Meta is now responding to the Wall Street Journal's findings, telling Fox Business in a statement, quote, between 2020 and 2022, these teams dismantled 27 abusive networks. And in January 2023, we disabled more than 490,000 accounts for violating our child safety policies. Emily, you and I were on this couch when there was another explosive Wall Street Journal report about the effect of Instagram and social media on teens. I'll never forget it. Senator Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat from Connecticut, created an account of a fake 13-year-old within 24 hours. He was curated content for eating disorders, an algorithm curating content for eating disorders. This was about a year ago. Well, now we learn they are curating content that is pedophilia in nature, uh, de de depicting sexual acts. I don't even want to describe what I read. An algorithm promoting this, Emily. Nothing about this actually surprises me, Kaylee. The only thing that surprises me is that tepid reaction from Meta that essentially is claiming they've actually done something about it. When they talk about the 27 networks, when they talk about the 490,000 illicit accounts, tell me the percentage that that represents. That's one through the eye hole. Well, what about the two million that haven't been discovered or acknowledged? Yep. Because whenever there's any existence of a structure, there will be nefarious activity. The dark web has been flourishing ever since the web was created. So why wouldn't there be a nexus with the advent of algorithms in the social media train? You know, I spoke with a representative, uh, the liaison between the United States Secret Service and the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children. And former Secret Service agent Jeff James explained carefully that this is exactly the issue, that this in fact is incredibly prevalent and that's why unfortunately it's so incumbent upon parents to understand what their teens are doing and their youth are doing and the reason I say unfortunately is because there is so much that kids do and that adults do on these social media platforms that parents have no insight into that they have no control over who has control who does have responsibility for it are these social media platforms that need to step up to the plate and final point for everyone on the woke left that associates law enforcement with simply walking a beat and with some type of racial representation on the sidewalks, this is why we need funding for law enforcement, yes. both federal and local and state, because it requires investigations and resources and humans to go after this and to solve this. It's a collaboration between law enforcement and these guys. I don't trust the 20 year old at the computer hey. at San Francisco's Facebook's yeah. headquarters to get everything done. I trust my law enforcement and they need funding for it. Yeah, no doubt. You know, Rachel, the details are sick. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Instagram accounts offering to sell illicit sex material generally don't publish it openly, instead posting menus of content. Certain accounts invite buyers to commission specific acts. Some menus include prices for videos of children harming themselves and imageries of the minor performing sexual acts with animals. Researchers at the Stanford Internet Observatory found at the right price, children are available for in-person meetups. It's disgusting. To your point, Emily, I had an FBI whistleblower on my podcast who talked about how he was removed from child sexual abuse cases in order to cover, to go over and get, you know, white supremacists and January 6 people. So these are the priorities of our government as well. I think we need to talk not just about what Meta and Instagram are doing or not doing, but also about this toxic soup. You look at the numbers of people who are wanting this material. Yes. Why is that happening? And the toxic soup is is several things. First, we have an open border. That's why Kat Kamak has called 
uh, Joe Biden, the uh, sex trafficker in chief. So we have people coming over the border, children, we have no idea what's happening. But it's so much deeper than that. We have the normalization of pornography in our culture. Yep. Younger and younger, the average age of a young child looking at pornography is now 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And that content is becoming more and more hardcore and it's affecting people into their adulthoods. And then we have the sexualization of children, which we all know is happening. And we have, to, and we have groups, we have academics saying, it's, you know, these are uh, child, att uh, adult attracted to child. They're having, coming up with these new names, minor attracted um, adults. Um, we have LGBT groups that, that, are, that are also normalizing this. And finally, I want to talk about the history of the sexualization of children. This is not a new thing. Marxists have been trying to do this for a long time. Back in 1919, there was an introduction of, of sexual curriculum into Marxist cultures because why? Sexualizing children, separating them from the values of their parents, that's the beginning of the breakdown of the family. So this is part of a much wider agenda that we need to pay attention to. Yes, yeah, Cheryl, to the point about the volume, it is really interesting uh, to Rachel's point here. Um, a Meta spokesperson said the company removed the 490,000 accounts. We went through that. Um, but they also found that current and former Meta employees who have worked on Instagram child safety initiatives estimate the number of accounts that exist primarily to follow such content is in the high hundreds of thousands, if not Right. Millions. Right. This is a cultural issue. Yes. They have got they have got a human problem at Meta and at Instagram. To your point about what was already discovered by the Wall Street Journal when it came to their effect on teenagers, that was the first black eye. They still have not, in, in effect, really controlled that issue. Look, Instagram has now become a, a, a sales platform. Mm -hmm. uh, they obviously are more focused on data and algorithms and less focused on human monitoring of the platform. I think that's the biggest issue with it. With and, and Twitter as well. You can add into this. But but with Instagram in particular, I'm sure you've I'll notice you're getting you're getting uh, more and more offers to buy things on Instagram. It is a money making platform. Kevin knows this very well. Now the issue though is that they cannot control these accounts. And the minute that they it's like say the hashtags, for example, right? So they'll you'll have like a like say it's pedophile or something. Well, if that is a blocked hashtag, then they come back and they put an emoji, and then that hashtag is right back on the platform. They have zero control over that platform right now. And the other thing I'll say, it's not just uh, the abuse of children. It's also animal abuse. It's also fake accounts. And there is a lot, a lot of fake identities. I think we all have them on Instagram. I know I can't control my fake identities on Instagram anymore. I mean, it is a, it's just a, become a platform for criminals. It's Kevin, so unfortunate. I could not help but think about Mark Zuckerberg sitting before Congress, and he was being asked about the harmful effects on children, on young girls. This is before the Wall Street Journal expose came out, proving that they had internal data at Meta showing that this was harmful to young girls. Take a look at how Mark Zuckerberg answered Congress. He had some interesting new ideas. Watch. And I find that very concerning, targeting this particular age bracket, 13 and under. Given these free services, how exactly will you be making money or are you trying to monetize our children too and get them addicted early? There is clearly a, a, a large number of people under the age of 13 who would want to use a service like Instagram. What would be beneficial uh, for, to our children to launch this kind of service? Congressman, I think helping people stay connected with friends and learn about different content online is broadly positive. You know, I just want to point out, Kevin, that was in response to a question about Meta wanting to create an Instagram for kids under 13. 44 attorneys general in this country, bipartisan Republican and Democrats have come out against that. They've abandoned that strategy. Think about you're on the board of directors of Meta, public company, owns Instagram. How do you fix this problem? And so the narrative now for all social media is, look, we have the benefit of being able to weed out these accounts with AI, and it's getting far and far higher resolution every month. So you can find these needles in a haystack. 95,000 accounts in a multi-billion dollar or billion unit platform is very, very hard to find. But now what's changing, and this narrative is across all of them, not just Instagram, it's Twitter, it's LinkedIn, it's, it's everybody. We have to put human beings back to make judgmental decisions when they see content that's not correct. I mean, child pornography is a scourge in our society. Mm -hmm. It's been around forever. It's almost, it seems impossible to stamp out. But if you're associated with the company that's being accused of this, this is not a good hair day for Zuckerberg, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and they want to fix this thing really fast. And the way they're going to do it is to combine the talents to find it with AI being the sleuth, the detective, brings up those accounts in front of a team of people.
Mm -hmm. Human beings who can make those decisions saying that content is inappropriate, I'm shutting down that account, yep. I'm making that directive and that decision. That would make me feel a lot more confident, it would make most parents feel better about it. Get the human beings back into it and tell the yeah. stories of how people make decisions better than computers when it comes to child pornography. Clearly, if it looks wrong, take it down. It's that simple. There's where we're going with this, not just for Zuckerberg, for everybody. This will continue to be happening. You'll constantly hear this. Congress is getting involved. Every politician wants to say something. Parents are offended. They don't like it, obviously. It'll get fixed that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really quick, um, my podcast this week is on the Marxist roots of the sexualization wow. of children. So if you want to check that out, do so. Yeah. I got to tell you, you know, Meta says they've made changes, but this all feels very, very reactive. Why weren't you on top of this from, from day one? From day one. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.